Hi, it's Mo, welcome back to the property vlog. This week, a short tactical video on a few things I've found to really help with focus and productivity. So with all the distractions of the modern world, the need for focus has never been greater. Here's a few things I've found that have helped me over the years. Let's jump straight in. A clean, tidy workspace and good cable management. It's really hard to stay focused and on task if your workspace is really cluttered and untidy. So I really recommend just clearing out your workspace and just getting rid of any junk that's on your desk. As you can see, I had quite a cluttered workspace before. I've actually changed to a monitor that now just has one cable between the laptop and the screen and that cable does the images and sound and also charges the laptop at the same time, just reduces the need to have two cables. The added bonus is that it's got a camera in the screen and a mic, so I can actually talk to the screen when I'm having my video calls. In addition to this, good cable management is really, really important. I've now put my ring light on the wall. I've tidied the cables up that are on and around my desk, just so the whole place is a lot cleaner. And I found it really helps with focus and productivity. Number two, time tracking. I've mentioned this on previous videos, but I really find that time tracking is really helpful for focus and productivity. I use something called Toggle, which I've spoken about before. Toggle basically lets you track your time, lets you assign your time to certain project, clients, folders, however you want to organise it. So you can actually see then on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual review how you're actually spending your time. There's two benefits to this. Number one, it actually lets you see where you're spending your time and you can make decisions about things you need to stop doing, you need to delegate, outsource, etc. But number two is actually it makes you work in a much more productive, focused way because you know you're on the clock and you know that if you take ages on a task that should just be like 10 or 15 minutes and you're there for like 45 minutes and you've been on social media in the meantime and all that stuff, it really makes you think about what you're doing and fighting against the clock, which is actually quite fun as well and you can sort of gamify it. The other thing I like about Toggle is that it's got a desktop app that you can start and stop the timer on and you can look at your projects and clients and things like that. It's also got an iPhone app and you can start your time on your iPhone, switch it off on your desktop the other way around. So they just integrate really well. Oh, and it's free to use. Number three, not having meetings in the morning. So for a couple of years now, I've not been having meetings before 10 a.m. And then after 10, I could have meetings and phone calls and do emails and WhatsApps and things like that. I'm now actually moving that because it's worked so well. I'm actually moving that to 11 a.m. We've got a couple of teams in the different businesses, so it's important that I am available. But I found not having any meetings up until 10 and what will now be 11 has been really key for focus and productivity, getting high value, deep work done in the morning before the distractions start. Uh, everyone knows as soon as you jump into your emails, your WhatsApps, your phone calls, it's very hard to then get back out and get focused again. Number four, do not disturb and making your phone and wearable tech less interesting. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Your phone, your smartwatch, anything like that, they're not designed with your focus and productivity in mind. They're designed to draw your attention to them, whether that's through notifications, sound, images, vibrating, all of that stuff. You need to turn all of that stuff off. I've got all my notifications switched off on my phone. If you want to take this another level deeper, you can also turn your phone into black and white and you can also do the same with your watch. I did try this for a period of time and actually it makes your phone and your watch much, much less interesting. So that's a really good one and definitely something I need to get back into. And number five, breaking your big annual goals down into quarterly, monthly, weekly and daily tasks. It seems to be widely attributed to Desmond Tutu, the quote, if you want to eat an elephant, there's only one way to do it, one bite at a time. And a massive shout out to Dan Hill from Property Entrepreneur, who's taken this concept and developed it through the Property Entrepreneur methodology, where we now take big annual goals, we break them down into quarterly, monthly targets. You take your top 10 items and then you break them down and you work on them daily. What we found is that big annual goals are just a culmination of lots and lots of little tasks. And most of these tasks are 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes in length. And all you can do is work on those short tasks each day, each week, each month, each quarter to get you to your bigger goal. So if you've got something big you're trying to achieve, just think about what that means on a quarterly basis, monthly, weekly, and then what you need to do each day. And that should really help you achieve it. So thank you for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed the shorter format, more tactical version of the property vlog video. If you've got any comments or questions, please pop them in the comments section. And if you've got any tips that have helped you with your productivity and focus, leave them in the comments. See you on next week's video.